It's a little loud, isn't it? So, okay, well, I have no control. <laughs> so, put it outside my mask. Does that help at all? Oh, look, people looking happy at me. Yay. Good morning, it's Pastor Patricia Hughes, and it's Pentecost. I am a big fan of Pentecost, as you have heard. And um, the colors for Pentecost are red, yellow, and orange. The idea is the holy fire that came on Pentecost and, and brought the Holy Spirit to the disciples. Did, um, if you didn't get one of these, our, our buddy Jack um, in the back, the usher will bring you a basket of these if you don't have one. Does everybody have one of these? Let's, let's practice. Anytime I say Holy Spirit, or wind, or fire, or Pentecost, or whenever you just kind of feel like doing it. Um, during the worship service, won't you wave your, your, um, your flames today? Um, I don't know if some of you remember, in years past, I have handed out kazoos. And one year we had um, those little windmill things that, I don't know what those are called. Anyway, and all those things require breath from our mouths, and so this year we are different. <laughs> so you've got to do this enthusiastically, since we've had to change up our holy wind. Thank you very much. Um, I want to, uh, I have a few more announcements this morning, but first I would love to have Margo um, tell us her announcement, and then I'll finish the up. Good morning. You have a place at the table. All are welcome. When we started exploring the possibility of becoming a Reconciling in Christ, or RIC, congregation, that statement guided our committee along the way. Holy Cross has that statement on our bulletins, on our website, on our letterhead, even on our pencils, among other places. It is who we are. It is who we have always been, I believe. We are reaching the end of the process in which we vote as a congregation to determine if we become a reconciling in Christ congregation. Part of that process is to write a statement to express our commitment to welcome all members of our community. And the committee has done that. We have written a statement. It expresses our desire to join other churches throughout the country to welcome people of all walks of life regardless of their sexual orientation, gender identity, or expression. Our committee also felt it was important to be clear that we welcome people of all races, that we stand against racism, that we, are, that we welcome all people of physical or mental abilities, of all people regardless of their station of life. It is what we mean when we say, you have a place at the table. You are all welcome. So today in your bulletin, and if you didn't get one, there's more in the back, um, in the north end, a piece of paper like this, has hands up at the top. This side of the page um, talks a little bit about where we've been this last year and a half. It gives directions to filling out an anonymous survey. And on the back, the first part is the welcoming statement that your RIC committee has written. We've taken it to the council and they have approved it. And now we need your input. Uh, the, there's only one question that you have to answer. So we kept it really simple. And the question is here and the responses that are possible are there. Um, it is one per voting member. It is not one per household. So if you have three people in your household that are voting members, we ask that all three fill out a survey. Um, the deadline is really quick. It's June 30th, so just over a week. We kind of did that on purpose. Right. So, June 1, say that again? June 1, not 30. Excuse me, June 1st. That's why I appreciate you listening. Because <laughs> I tend to do that. Um, you can drop it in the basket today. If you know how you want to fill it out and you want to drop it in the basket, it's in the back. Okay, it says RIC survey. If you need a little time to think and pray about it, you can bring it back next Sunday during the drive-by, drive-through communion. Um, you can mail it to the church. 
You can send an email with your responses. You don't need to have the whole survey there. You can just put your responses in. It is anonymous, so we will remove any names to it. So if it comes an email, we'll remove your name before we put it into the box. Uh, we'll do the same with letters. We'll make sure that we don't have, there's no names on it. So please be honest and fill it out, and most importantly, get it back to us. Uh, we need your input. We want your input. As we have said all along, this is a congregational decision, and before we go forward, we really need to know how people are feeling about this. So thank you very much. Um, if you can't find one of these, they're on the back table. Thank you. Thank you, Margo. So summer is upon us, and um, this will be this Pentecost for worshiping in this sanctuary, and sanctuary rules are, are masked on. And so because there are new opportunities, we'll be worshiping in the garden this summer. Um, at least four times. And so it would be my joy if you would sign up to do one of the setup issues. Um, one reason we worship in the garden is it's safer. But there's a lot more involved in setting up for worship. You just don't unlock the door and walk in. So if you could possibly sign up for one of those four Sundays, we have clipboards out there in the narthex. That would be really helpful so that we can make summer worship happen. And because of that extra setup time, all summer, worship will be at 10. What time is worship at this summer? 10. You know, I'm not supposed to make you talk. What was I doing? I <laughs> you know, I've been doing this too long. Anyway, um, I want to let you know that I'm grateful for your volunteering. Today, we're also um, going to have graduates honored. If you didn't get a chance to sign the cards to the graduates, those are in the narthex for you to sign. The day of Pentecost is all about celebrating our baptism and the movement of the Holy Spirit throughout the world. And graduation is a, a huge moment to connect with Pentecost, uh, in my opinion. Um, I want to also mention next week we'll have drive-up communion at noon, right up here, like we, we usually have when we have drive-up communion. Please feel free to join us then. I will have a box for you to put those surveys in. If, uh, um, if you get yours completed and you need to be able to bring them by. Okay, what have I forgot? Anybody tell me what announcements have I missed? All right, let's go to the place inside ourselves where we worship our Lord. I ask you to rise. The assistant minister and I will do the responses for the confession and forgiveness. I'll let you go to the mic, please. Because I'm still asking you all to uh, be silent behind your mask. Here we are. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, all your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Even peace, let us pray to the Lord. For mercy, for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the mercy, for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord.
sanctify your church and give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Won't you be seated for the first reading? reading comes from the book of Acts, the second chapter, beginning with the first verse. A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there was a, a, a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there was devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each other. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are you not all who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthenians, Meds, Elamites, each in the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and the visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in their own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who are in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the days, in the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall turn, be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand. This is your part two, Judy. Here we go. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I'm going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, Sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and he will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. 
I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Won't you be seated? <coughs> Well, I read an article this week about returning to movie theaters in the spring and summer of this year. <clears throat> After 15 months of mostly not being allowed in theaters, what will bring the audiences back, do you think? What will bring you back? At, at my house, we watched some of those Netflix premieres. I, I bet a lot of you did. We even... Um, signed up for a free seven-day trial with Apple TV, yes, I'm that cheap, and um, to watch the Tom Hanks World War II movie, and that was a lot of fun. But I missed the theater. I bet you did too. In my heart, what will bring me back to watch a movie in a theater will be the sheer beauty of a scene painted across those 45 feet or more of the movie theater screen. A long time ago, I don't actually want to think about how long, I saw a revival of Lawrence of Arabia that they uh, shot, that they, they uh, showed in a movie theater. That was exciting. It was four hours counting the intermission. But I remember when the credits began to roll, I didn't get up because I was just stunned. At the, at the scenes that I had been witness to those last few hours, the vast oceans of sand, the miles and miles of caravans of camels, I have to tell you, that was what kept me in my seat, mouth open in wonder as the credits rolled. So it seems to me, and maybe I'm the only population for this, but if movie makers want to get me back in the theater, I don't need any more drama. How about you? I've had enough drama these last 15 months. Drama's not going to get me in the theaters. It's going to be beauty. It's going to be the vastness of God's creation on the screen. We've had drama. Attempting to keep ourselves and the ones we love safe for all these months. Will this outbreak claim more lives, we think? Will there be lives that we know lost? Will those we love get ill? And if they do get ill, will they be able to survive their illness? Not everybody does. Will they be one who suddenly takes a turn for the worst? I have to tell you the roller coaster of COVID-19 has continued to kind of wear me out. I wonder if it's weared you out too. It seems like nearly every day in these times I would be relieved at the survival of people I know only to be decimated again as I open 